Hello, and welcome back to this series on looking at how we can make a high voltage output from a, a really low voltage input, so basically a 9 volt battery. So in my previous couple of videos, I really designed and built a switch mode power supply that takes 9 volts and transforms it into a, a high voltage, so several kilovolts, AC signal. Obviously, this is going to be very low current. And um, we actually used that to generate some plasma, which was pretty cool. It worked well. However, in this video, I'm actually going to couple the output of that power supply to a voltage multiplier. This is going to make a high voltage DC and then into a Marx generator. And this is going to make a pulsed output very, very high voltage. So there's a bit of an obligatory warning here. Um, things are getting pretty dangerous. So DC high voltage is very dangerous. And then when you couple that with some capacitors and char um, stored charge, it's really, really very dangerous. So in other words, don't try this at home. But with that, let's make a start. We're going to start by building a Cockroft Walton voltage multiplier. I'm not going to bore you with the details. Here's basically the circuit diagram of what, of what we're going to build. And really, each stage, so each capacitor diode combination, C1, D1, C2, D2, um, doubles the voltage or adds the, the input voltage again. So two stages gives you two times the output, three stages gives you three times the output, four stages four times the output, and so on. Um, this can go on quite a long time. It can't go on indefinitely, obviously. Um, because the, the higher the voltage you get, the bigger the losses are, and you end up um, more stages don't necessarily get you more voltage. But that's the first thing we're going to build. And once we've got this operational, we're going to connect it to our marks bank. So here I've pi pinched a diagram of Wikipedia. Uh, basically shows the marks bank in its charging condition. So in, in essence, we have a, a series um, of capacitors and resistors. And when it's in its charging condition, those capacitors labeled C charge through those charging resistors labeled RC. So if you think about it in this condition, imagine you're applying 10 volts or 10 kilovolts DC, for example. Uh, each capacitor will eventually charge up to whatever that charging voltage is, say 10 kV. That's in its charging condition. However, when discharging, basically these spark gaps that you can see um, drawn in, in clearly now, um, basically form an electrical connection using a plasma and it connects all those capacitors in series. So basically we're charging them in parallel and we're discharging them in series. And when we're discharging them in series, their voltages essentially add up together. So if you've got 10 capacitors in your marks bank, you'd be expecting something like 10, 10 times your input voltage at your output. So there's a real chance you can generate incredibly high voltages um, using this kind of circuit topology. So let's make a start with this. That's basically enough components to build what's shown on the circuit diagram. Let's do one more, two more. Need to save those capacitors though for the marks bank. So there you go, a lot easier on the half bridge. This is where things are now becoming a little bit dangerous.
Okay, so quick sanity check. DC power supply, 9 volts, and it's connected to half bridge. Half bridge is connected to transformer between the two MOSFETs and the two capacitors. The high voltage output of the transformer. Don't really like those two wires overlapping, but the voltage is not particularly high out of that. Um, going into my voltage multiplier. So out of this, we're expecting a DC voltage relatively high. Let's turn it on, standing back. Okay, it's already gone off the charts, off the oscilloscope screen, so let's turn that down. Ay ay ay. aye. Um, yeah, there's already 30 kilovolts on that, just from a, a nine volt input at um, 16 milliamps. I'm suddenly becoming a little bit nervous that this is going too high. My capacitors are only rated for um, 20 kV. So that's not a problem here because they're not you know, all connected to ground, but it is quite high. I'm even heart scared to touch the thing. We're pushing things, but again, this is kind of what this video is about. When we've got the marks bank on, the loading of the capacitors will hopefully reduce that. I'm going to turn this off and we can see the voltage has dropped but just for the purposes of being safe what I'm going to do is I'm going to ground a cable here and I'm just going to tap various parts. I know that's safe but I'd rather just know for absolute certain and also because now we're dealing with high voltage DC turning my power supply off before I touch anything. Okay, so this bit works. The next job is to really make this marks bank. What on earth is this, you might think. This is actually going to be my spark gap, or my marks bank. So a marks bank has spark gaps. I'm going to make those out of these screws on this 3D printed board. Basically the idea is to mount them like this. We can change the threading so we can change the gap. And um, we'll be like this and we'll put the resistors and capacitors um, where they need to be basically. So let's get on and start putting these um, spark gas together. Um, the issue here is of course this is not a very good quality 3D print. Look you can see it's sort of bending. The threads are not very good. Um, so I mean that's understandable because I didn't use supports and 3D printers are not famed for their ability to print over fresh air. So the screw threads are not very good. I've already run a screw through the backs of each gap so hopefully we'll be able to get the screws in. Let's have a go. Okay, let's start putting the resistors on. So here are my resistors. So basically the first resistor comes from the high voltage power supply. I'm going to put that here. I think I'll just wind them round first and then solder them all at the end. That's one. More capacitor means more stores charge, which basically means more current really on the output rather than voltage. It's the number of stages which 
increases voltage here. So you can think of this basically as um, when the spark gaps are not fired this is basically all grounded, there's nothing connected here so it's just floating so basically there's no current flow through these once everything's charged up so the voltage along here is zero. The same here we apply our high voltage 30 kV and eventually once all these capacitors have charged up through these resistors they're all going to be at 30 kV. Then when the gap actually triggers, you actually connect these capacitors as follows. This point, this capacitor here gets connected to ground via that spark gap. That means this is 30 kV higher than ground. We get a spark across there, which connects them basically doot 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 doot. Well, I've put the camera on 120 frames a second and um, I think I'm ready to turn the voltage up. So I'm starting with just 9 volts on the inputs, but I'll, I'm using the DC power supply for now so I'm going to gradually turn it up. I think we'll know if it's working or not. Well, I can hear the 5 kilohertz, but I don't see any sparks. Probably means the spark gap's too big. Just going to slightly increase the voltage. Okay, that's 12 volts on the in now. That's higher than we're going to get with the battery, and there's nothing there. Okay, what I've done now is I've basically moved the gaps um, a little bit closer. Um, I didn't film it because there was a quite a amount of swearing involved because it was pretty difficult once everything was soldered. And as you can probably see as well, I've actually soldered on some additional um, resistors. This is just to make charging a little bit quicker. Um, so let's turn the volts on and see what happens. I mean, again, we're right on the borderline with the voltage because, as you saw, it's not, it should be sparking relatively repeatedly. But it's not. Um, but it's certainly sparking when it goes. It's very difficult to know exactly what the voltage is, but assuming there's um, still 30 kV going in, you'd expect four times that on the outputs. There's definitely going to be a lot of losses, so I doubt it. Um, but you can see there is certainly uh, some high voltages there. So, just to summarize this video, we coupled a voltage multiplier and a mark generator to the output of our high voltage switch mode power supply. Um, the output from the marks voltage is incredibly high voltage and a high current pulse. Um, so as you saw in the video, this was this was not a tiny thin little arc. This was quite a meaty um, high voltage arc, and it would do some serious damage if you um, actually touched it. And indeed, um, I didn't actually measure the voltage. It was too risky given my voltage probe is only rated for around 30 kilovolts. And also, I didn't actually show this, but it actually destroyed my benchtop power supply. So the little um, benchtop power supply I was using to generate the 9 volts, instead of always having to use the battery, it actually completely shut down, never to turn on again. And I checked all the fuses and it just something internal is destroyed and I don't really have time to fix it at the moment. So that's a bit of a blow, but I'm certainly glad I weren't fiddling around with my fingers trying to clip and unclip a battery um, on this particular system. So that was a, a bit of a stupid thing to do. Anyway, that's it for this video and um, thanks for a lot for watching. Obviously, if you've got any questions, comments, put them in the chat um, and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm still recording a, another series of videos, but it's taking some time. I've not been so well over Christmas. 
So things are, are, are quite a lot delayed, but don't worry, there'll be some new videos coming out soon, and I'll catch you in the next one.